Hadn't heard about the Sword Boys for a while. Back in the news, courtesy of a former gang member going public with the story of his road to redemption. Riz Yacoub was part of the scene when the Sword Boys were being born. That was back when we just started watching this. How you doing? The mid-1990s was a coming-of-age period for Gangland WA. The Rebels had just arrived in town and there were a number of street gangs of which the Sword Boys, so-called because members wore a silver scimitar around their neck, was the biggest. As the Bloods and the Crips fought it out on the streets of South Central LA, we got a problem here? the fledgling Sword Boys held their turf wars in Perth's equivalent of Compton, <laughs> the Molly Galleria. <laughs> They clashed with other gangs who also had 90s boy band names. The Dragon Boys and Spider Boys were Vietnamese. They grew out of the original Vietnamese gang, the CIA, which was formed in 1992, three years before the Bentley Triads formed. Oh, it's also cringy. Mm, no argument there. The Scorpion Boys were an offshoot of the Sword Boys, frenemies who were mainly Lebanese but all Middle Eastern. And my favourite of them all, the Embros. Sounds like something Marky Mark would be in. These gangs started like all gangs start, disaffected teenage boys and young men hanging out because they were on the fringes of society and searching for a brotherhood. Best friends forever and ever. Oh, friend! Unfortunately, one of the most dangerous animals on earth is a disaffected young man or teenager who's on the fringes of society and searching for brotherhood. By the early 2000s, they'd gone from being petty thugs strutting in shopping malls to serious criminals. In 2003, the cops pulled their finger out and had a proper look at them. They were surprised at the level of criminality. Gun running, drug distribution, a protection racket targeting overseas students, safe cracking, manufacturing explosives, extortion, fire bombings, drive-by shootings. You name something in the penal code and these guys were into it. There are things on this list that I haven't even done. Most interesting for the cops, though, was the gang's deep links to the coffin cheaters. The police said the cheaters were using the boys to move drugs at street level. The cheaters actually issued a public statement saying they weren't. They said the club denies claims of a sinister alliance with street gangs, Lebanese or otherwise. The coffin cheaters are proudly acquainted with people from all walks of life. Oh, very woke. So the cops were wrong? The cops were 100% right. The sword boys and the coffin cheaters had deep and enduring links. <laughs> but the relationship had its ups and downs. They were like a gangland version of Ross and Rachel. We are so over. <laughs> Fine by me! What was causing the friction? Not what. Who? Troy McCanty again proved to be the Kevin Bacon of Australia's underworld. That anyone in Hollywood can be linked to Kevin Bacon in six steps or less. In 2005, the Sword Boys and the Cheaters faced off in what was then ground zero for Perth gang activity, the Red Sea nightclub in Subiaco. A coffin cheater named Alex Jovizovic fired a shot after he and a handful of bikies shaped up to some Sword Boys. They'd heard McCanty had been, and I quote from later court transcripts, flushed up by some Lebanese. Flushed up was an understatement. Hours earlier, McCanty had been slashed to the bone at the place bikers and gangsters go if the Red Sea's too busy. Metro City nightclub. Scorpion boy Nabil Debag stabbed McCanty as sword boy Marco Serrani looked on. That altercation ended with John Kizon holding Debag as McCanty shot him five times in the legs. The Metro meeting was triggered by a massive fight in Northbridge a few weeks earlier between the Cheaters and Sword and Scorpion boys, including two of DeBag's nephews. No touching of the hair or face. Of course. And that's it. Now let's do this. This triggered what we'd probably call a conscious uncoupling between the bikies and the boys. So the sword boys went it alone. And they didn't slow down. Do you remember the boxing match between Danny Green and Paul Briggs about 12 or 13 years yeah, ago? Yeah, the one where Briggs took a dive. Yep. Head hunting. <laughs> the sword boys were behind a $200,000 betting plunge in the minutes leading up to that fight. Green didn't know what was going on, but Briggs and the boys certainly did. <laughs> Even hit him. That was around the time the gang was accused of providing muscle during a dispute over the construction of Bank West's new headquarters at Rain Square. Police were focused on brothers Ziad and Rabi Janaid, who'd always denied being members of the gang. The Janaids were property developers and major donors to a gang even more ruthless and uncompromising than the Sword Boys, the Liberal Party of Australia. 
In 2005, Ziad was meant to be one of 14 guests scheduled to dine at South Perth's Link restaurant with then Prime Minister John Howard. He was banned after the police told the PM's office that Australia's four-time national bench press champion was a security risk. So bizarre. He once lifted 235 kilos. I reckon that's at least three little Johnnies, so you can understand why the cops were worried. Nine years later, we found out the full story about why police were nervous. Ziad and his brother were convicted of building their property empire with drug money. They started a 14-year stretch in September 2016. But it did take a while for the cops to catch up with oh, them. Mate, they'd been going after Ziad in particular for 12 years, but nothing would stick. The DPP had dropped earlier drugs charges. The ATO dropped its claim that he owed them $27 million. He even won against his insurer. When GIO refused to pay him out a $25,000 claim, he lodged after two pieces of gold jewellery were stolen. Gangsters love their gold. One in particular, as we all know. Dane Brakovich is causing more embarrassment for the McGowan government. A few months after, he made a mockery of the state's bikey insignia laws by claiming the massive tattooed Hells Angel walking near his house wasn't him. It's emerged the government-owned Perth Mint handed him 27 grand worth of gold without doing any more background checks than looking at his driver's licence. The Mint, which is owned by Gold Corporation, is currently being investigated by the Financial Crimes Regulator on suspicions it's breached anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism financing laws. We must point out there's no suggestion the money Dane used to buy the gold was unclean, assuming it was Dane and not the other guy. I'm Ben Hart. That's confidence. That's confidence. That's confidence. Once you know what you're doing, there's nothing stopping you. To take on the market with confidence, watch Trading Up, your daily finance update at thewest.com.au.